Different types of tests use different types of tubes. Kids are naturally curious. We ask a lot of questions, but it helps us learn. I'm Jacqueline. I'm Lizzie. I'm Ethan. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm a medical technologist at the laboratory for Trios Health. Today we're going to show the kids around the lab what we do here. It should be a lot of fun. Welcome to the lab at Trio Southridge Hospital. This is where we process all of the blood and other samples that we collect from patients. We do all sorts of different testing so that the doctors can help figure out what's wrong with you or see if you're perfectly healthy. Have any of you ever had blood collected before? Yeah. Had to have your blood yeah. drawn? Yeah. And how do they get the blood out of you? What do we have to they, use to do that? They like, take a needle and they put it like in one of the, like, Look, arm. one of these veins. That's right. You put a needle in your vein and the blood comes out into different types of tubes. Why do you think we use different types of tubes for the mm, blood? Maybe for different types of bloods. Different types of bloods, different types of tests. That's right. Different types of tests use different types of tubes depending on what we're going to test the blood for. So this one has a purple top. And this one, the blood will stay just like it is when it comes out of your body. It'll stay red and it'll look the same. And we use this tube to do cell counts. We count the white cells and the red cells and the platelets that are in your body. The doctor can use that to tell if you have an infection, if you have lots of white cells. Your white cells are what fight off infections. You can tell if you have something called anemia, where you don't have enough red blood cells. You can even tell if you're dehydrated. So use a tube like this with a gold top, and you'll see there's something at the bottom already. That's a gel. And with these tubes, what we do is we put them in a centrifuge. You know what a centrifuge is? No. Centrifuge has lots of little holes inside, and we close the lid, and it spins the tubes around really, really fast. And when it does that, the cells all come to the bottom, and we're left with just the liquid part up at the top. And so then we can test different things on the liquid part of your blood. We can test things like glucose. Do you know what glucose is? Sugar? Sugar. Glucose is sugar. We can see how much sugar is in your blood. Just check for things like diabetes. If you have to measure your blood sugar when you have diabetes. We can look for things like electrolytes. That's things like sodium and potassium and chloride. We can measure those to make sure that your muscles have enough electrolytes to work properly. Also, we will centrifuge, spin it really fast, make the cells go all the way to the bottom, and then just left with the liquid at the top. And this is for coagulation. That's to tell us if your blood is clotting right or not. So if you cut yourself on your arm, what happens to the blood? Does it just keep coming out and coming out? No, it stops. It scabs. It scabs, exactly. So we can tell if your blood is going to stop flowing and form a scab. If this is abnormal, you might have a bleeding condition and the doctor would have to treat that. How do you keep the cells in the blood, like, not to get mixed up again? The cells are heavier than the liquid part, so when you spin them around, it packs them all in the bottom of the tube and you just have the liquid part at the top. How do you get the liquid out and not the cells? The different machines we have have little probes that will go down in the tube and only take the part that they need. Why don't you have gel in all of the tubes? That's an excellent question. Sometimes, in a tube like this one, for your blood cell count, we don't want the cells to separate. We want to keep them mixed, and so the gel would get in the way. In a tube like this, the gel can interfere. You see there's a little bit of liquid down in there. We don't want the gel to interfere with what's going on inside the tube. So we have to be very careful that we don't drop the tube or shake it after we've centrifuged it so that we don't mix it back up again. What are your most common tests? That's a great question. We do a lot of different tests. One of our most common ones is run on that purple tube. It's called a CBC. That's where we count the different cells in your body. Pretty much every patient here will have one of those every day. And people that come that are outpatients that just come and get their blood drawn for their doctor will usually have one of those as well. We also do some chemistry tests that are pretty common the glucose test, the electrolyte tests, um, and we also do a lot of what are called cardiac markers. And those are the ones that will tell us 
that can tell us if you're having a heart attack or if it's just something else that's going on. Cardiac markers, when they become elevated, can tell the doctor to look at the patient closely for a heart attack. Well, how many tests do you think you do on average each year? You probably run about 30,000 tests a month. Oh my gosh. Each tube will run a whole series of tests on. So if I put this on the chemistry analyzer, it's going to run 10 or 15 different tests just for that one patient. And when I put the purple top tube on the CBC analyzer, it's going to run four or five different individual tests all at once on that tube. And the blue top for the coagulation is going to run two or three different tests all at once. And so if we do a thousand patients, that could be 15 or 20,000 tests right there. Could you tell, like when you do a test, if they're going to have future problems? Usually the tests we do are to tell the doctor what's going on right now. So when we count your blood cells, it can tell the doctor that you have an infection right now. Or if we run a chemistry test, it can tell the doctor that your sugar level is high right now and that they need to treat that right away. There are some tests that we do that can predict things or tell what has happened in the past. There's a test that's similar to the glucose test that looks at your blood cells and can tell if you've had high blood sugar over the past three months. And that can help identify a patient that has diabetes. Some of the tests we do are quick tests. I put that purple top tube on the analyzer and it's only going to take a few minutes to give me a result and then the doctor has the results. Other tests can take 15 or 20 minutes to run and it takes a little longer to get the results. And there's some tests that we don't run here that the doctors might order. We have to send these tubes to another lab somewhere else, and those can take a couple of days before we get the results. What would you do if like, someone was like a, like a life risk and it took a really long time to do the test? We have a department called Blood Bank where we store blood that's been donated for emergencies when people are, have a, uh, an accident and are bleeding a lot and they need to put more blood back into them. And those tests can take a long time. So in an emergency, we're able to give blood to the doctor while the test is going on. So those are a bunch of great questions, but I was wondering if you guys would like to see some of the equipment we use here in the lab. Yeah. yeah. So we use a lot of different equipment in the lab. This analyzer here is our main chemistry analyzer. This is where we run those electrolyte tests, the liver and kidney tests, the glucose test. Those are all done on this analyzer. And it has lots of moving parts inside. Inside here, we use different type of reagents, different chemicals, and they come in little packs and they go inside this wheel over here. And you'll see there's two arms one on either side, and those are used to sample the chemicals. It sucks up a little amount of the chemical, and we'll put it into a tube over here in this wheel. And then we have this arm that's white in the front. This is where our samples will go. This arm will dip into the blood sample and put it back in a tube here. And it mixes these chemicals with the blood sample and can give us a result. Tell us how much glucose is in your blood. This is the rack that goes on there. We can put either the green top tubes or the gold top tubes in this rack. And it sits down in this wheel right here. And then when we're ready to run a test on it, we push the run button on the analyzer. So when you push the run button, it's going to start moving all of the parts, make sure everything moves the way it's supposed to, and make sure everything is ready to test the samples that we've just put on. So it's checking all of the different chemicals we have inside to make sure it's got all the ones it needs. This piece of equipment does all of the measuring and all of the calculations for us and then gives us the result. What do you do like after like it's all done like adding the chemicals and it's like ready? So after it runs the test and it's all done with that tube, we put the tubes in a rack in a refrigerator and we keep them for one week. Why? Sometimes the doctor might want to run another test say they only ordered a few things on that first sample. And then based on those results, they might want a different test later. We can pull that tube out of the refrigerator and run the new test. After seven days, they are dumped in those biohazard bins, the big red bins. They're dumped in there and they're disposed of. They're no good after seven days.
All right, so that's the lab here at Trio Southridge Hospital. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We did. Yeah, Great. of course. <laughs>